Pokebabs! Hey guys, welcome back to Pokebabs. Today we are going into round one of the August Poke Beach tournament, playing that Metacham Carbink deck, going up against Ninja Otter 2499. And uh, <clears throat> I actually know what deck uh, he's playing because we had started to play our first game and then there was maintenance issue and the servers went down and so we got halfway through the game it was three to three on prizes and so we decided to start over um so he's playing a vespaquin valplume deck with uh with, with the jolteon in it and all right so we mulligan but we are going first which is huge and let's see what uh opponent starts with unfortunately obviously mulliganing against them is bad but okay so this looks like a pretty good starting hand we start with halucha because free retreat and we're probably going to play down the carbink and the metachamp as well but let's just see what our opponent is starting with it may be important they start with oddish okay now we're going to put down the metatite and the carbink um definitely and the question is um do we go for a karina or a sycamore and i think if we had started with an energy in hand or with a focus ash or something like that, um, I'd be willing to Karina perhaps uh, because we already have the Metacham as well. But because we don't have an energy or a focus ash, I want to make sure that we get down our focus ashes before we get item locked. Um, so we're also going to play down that float stone because um, it's nice to have a float stone on the card bank because you don't have to burn an energy when you retreat out of it. And uh, the question is do we want to power up? the uh the metacham first <clears throat> or rather the metatite first or go for a carbink break and uh, i think that what we want to try and do is power up the metacham uh power up a metacham we're gonna go for a shaman here and could have lowered our hand size with uh, by playing down the stadium and then discarding something else, but I really want to keep my N, um, and I want to keep my VS Seekers, so I can, or I want to play the VS Seekers this turn, so this is kind of nice. We did get the energy, and we're going to be able to um, get our VS Seekers and everything. We didn't draw a Carbink Break, which makes me much less confident about getting uh, the, and we didn't get energy in the discard, so it makes me much less confident about going for the Carbink Break route. Um, question here is what, what do we get back? We could get a Karina or an AZ back. It may not matter because we might just be sycamoring next turn. Um, and we also got that, uh, focus dash on the Halucha, which is nice. It means that we most likely will not get knocked out this turn. Um, which, uh, again, buying ourselves turns, um, with this deck is really key, especially in, in a matchup like this where they can just run through us like you wouldn't believe. Um, unfortunately, Carbink and, um, Regirock and Zygarde are all weak to grass, so that's a downside. So our opponent does get two floatstones down, um, on their potentially heavy retreat Pokemon. And we see a setup drawing, I think that was only two cards. Uh, we see, okay, um... All right, so that's big. They put energy onto Bunnelby, so that is um, encouraging. See, they also discard another energy. They didn't get the Force of Giant Plants, so they weren't able to evolve their Oddish, even though they had that Gloom. And now they do have the Forest. They're going to get a Vespaquin out and play a Battle Compressor. So the good thing here is that we will not get hit by um, the Vespaquin. Now, I don't know if that... Like I said, with the Focus Ash down, I'm not sure if it would have been a huge deal. would have probably been fine. See them discarding their Jolteon there, actually, which is interesting because I guess they're probably seeing that it won't be a very useful attacker just because our Pokemon are mostly evolved. Um, and let's see, we see Farewell Letter. Also, obviously, Prize Trade is not in their favor. If they play the Jolteon, if they go the Jolteon route. But yeah, as long as my opponent doesn't get. Oh, I, I think, yeah, so they already played. I can't remember if they played a supporter yet, but as long as they don't get. Um, don't Lysander something or play a Megaphone, which would be a big. Which would be really surprising, honestly. We should be okay. Um, what we'd really like to see here is um, a way to take a knockout or a double knockout next turn so 
an energy and put down Metacham would be one way we can knock out um, the active possibly. But um, after that, I guess we'll just see what our opponent can get down. Um, hmm. So we see they've discarded enough. Uh, looks like they've discarded enough to knock out a Shaman. So uh, the rest of it's pretty inconsequential to us. We get a Metacham down. And we've got a lot of options for supporters here. But also, well, they actually didn't get the item lockdown, which is pretty big. We probably could Karina, but I'd rather go for the knockout on the Oddish. Because if we can get a strong energy, we can knock out an Oddish. Unfortunately, we do miss the strong energy. And only one Regirock means we're doing 40, not 50. Um, we do get a Megaphone, though, which is pretty big. Um, allows us to discard two Floatstones, and it's possible they only play two Floatstones. Um... Also, the letter's nice, too, because it helps us just make sure that we can stream energy for a long time. Um, and so I think we do want to take the knockout on the Oddish, but it would just it would have been nice if we could have taken a double knockout or a knockout and hit something else. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, putting down the Regirock just because we do have the Floatstone, and uh, if we're going to put down a Regirock, we want to put a Floatstone down. Um could be a potentially a Lysander target, but um, I think it's going to be important to have the extra damage. Um, if We might need to get down two Regirocks so we can take um, two hit knockouts on Vespaquins, cause we need to make, or, which is essentially a one-turn knockout. So we need to make sure that we can take knockouts on Vespaquin. Um, right now we're not doing enough to take a knockout on Vespaquin, which is pretty sad. <laughs> Uh, 40 twice is only 80. So, see what our opponent does here. We did get ahead in prizes, though, which is nice. And as long as we don't see something like a Zero Sick or a Megaphone coming down, our Metacham will survive another turn. So, we see a retreat into Shaman EX. They're going to Sky Return, allowing them to set up next turn, but also uh, breaking the Focus Ash. And this is pretty key that they're trying to break the Focus Sash because um, only doing 30 damage, we can Calm Mind if we'd like to heal the 30 damage as our second attack. Uh, we're going to put down our Stadium just so they have a harder time getting into Vileplume. The question is where, what kind of energy do we attach? Do we go for the Knockout on the Vespaquin? Um, you know... The fact that we played the two floatstone down, or we got rid of the two floatstone, makes me think they probably won't find a floatstone next turn. Maybe. Um, and so, if we take a knockout on Vespaquin, will they be able to retaliate with a knockout? And I think the answer is probably going to be no. Um, and so, the question here is do we call Mind or Yoga Kick? I'm just going to go with Yoga Kick. Like I said, I think taking the knockout, basically, they're going to have a hard time getting a uh, another Vespaquin up next turn that they can attack with. They'd need a third floatstone or an AZ. So, uh, we see Battleby come active, which makes sense. And they bump the stadium. Unfortunately, we see Shamaniax coming down and drawing them up to six cards with setup. So, the big thing is do they get a Combi down? Do they get Vespaquin down? Do they get item lock off? At this point, we're not so concerned about item lock. We've already got down two Focus Sashes, two floatstones. And we've got a bunch of energy in our hand, so um, we'll, we should be able to set up a second meta champ before they can take a knockout on us. And wow, okay, so they played Buddy Buddy Rescue, which I I did know from our previous match. It's interesting that they play Buddy Buddy Rescue. I'm guessing the reason is so they can get something like a Bunnel Bee or a Shaman back later in the game, as opposed to Revitalizer, which just lets them get back the Grass types. So we do see an energy go onto a Combi, which is a little scary, but. So let's see, if they um, get a Vespaquin and a Z, they could take a knockout this turn, which would be um, would be kind of tough to deal with at that point. I think what we would have to do is kind of look a couple turns down the road, um, and meanwhile probably just send up Halucha to take two hits. As we can see here, my opponent's discarded a lot of Pokemon. question is, are they going to even be able to get down... Uh, a Vileplume. And if they do, can they get a Floatstone on it? 
Um, I don't think we've played uh, Lysander or or discarded or anything like that. So um, the deck out option is definitely there. Uh, we see a trainer's mail. So what? They're going to acro bike. And they discard a combi. Okay. And there's a Lysander. All right. That's interesting. Bringing up Shaman EX. Um, makes sense. It's the best thing for them to bring up. Everything else has either got free retreat or is going to evolve or is going to turn into one of our attackers. So we see a Rototiller. Um, if they have double colorless, they might get that back. If they have. I mean, maybe they would want to get back Lysander. Not sure. Um, maybe they would burrow us. Okay, so they actually get a Vespaquin back. That makes sense, too. Increasing their chances of drawing into that. And what's the other card? The good thing is they filled up their bench, so at the moment they can't put down another Shaman EX or an Unknown or anything like that for extra draw. And what are we going to see here? All right, bring back double colorless. So that makes sense. And um, we're going to be able to take a knockout this turn. Um, we don't hit for weakness, though. But let's see. Uh, we're doing 30, 40, 50, 60 with the Regirock. So we can actually take a knockout and heal ourselves with Calm Mind. Um, and this is going to be huge. We also still have an energy in hand in case we need, in case they Lysander us again. Uh, which you never know could happen. Get an Ultra Wall of the prizes. Uh, it doesn't really matter so much because they did get the Valplum, unfortunately, and we're going to Calm Mind. Um, revitalizing that Focus Sash. The use of that Focus Sash. So uh, now we're in a pretty good spot. Question is, what is our opponent going to do? We see a Double Colorless coming down on the Shaman. And are they going to retreat and attack with a Vespaquin? Um... If they did, what would they do if we knocked them out? So instead, we just see a Sky Return. I'm probably going to send up uh, Shaman EX. Yep. Could have sent up Valplume too, maybe. We got a Carbink Break, and I think we might as well evolve into it. Um, that way, that energy we have in hand is really can be useful later to get back energy. And uh, I think we're just going to... Well, we definitely want to call Mind this turn, because we want to be able to heal the damage and get our Focus Ash back. Um, we're going to just... We will attack um, with Yoga Kick just in case they decide to retreat next turn or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if they try and pull some sort of Shaman Loop on us. But I don't know what that does for them besides buy them turns to get into Vileplume. Um, it, it does do that, but it also, they're running out of cards and it's going to buy us turns to get um, another attacker set up. And with only three prizes left, um, soon enough we're going to be able to probably just take the knockout on a Shaman um, and be willing to be knocked out but uh, as is we're just going to wait I think if we just wait until we get a better board state before attacking for a knockout that's probably the way to go um, just double call let's come down under Shaman EX but most likely we're going to be seeing Another Sky Return. That is indeed what we see. Now, if that... If they were doing even 10 more damage... Or if they were doing... I guess it's not... It doesn't... It's not a big deal if they only do 10 more damage. Um, so the question is, do we put the... What do we... What energy do we put down? I think we have to put down the strong energy. And the question... The other question is, where do we put it? Um, we want to save an energy just in case they Lysander Shaman. Um... So the question is, do we want to set up another attacker or set up a Carbink? Um, if we get a second attacker set up, though, then I'd be willing to knock out a Shaman. So that's the appeal of the Metacham. So that's what we're going to go with. But obviously, I think putting it on the Carbink wouldn't be a terrible idea either. And we're just going to Yoga Kick and Calm Mind again. And at any time, we can Yoga Kick twice for knockout. Um, and I mean, maybe next turn is the turn to do that. I would actually want to wait until we have another energy. Um, just so that we could avoid the Lysander issue. We haven't seen Hex Maniac yet either, which would be helpful. And our opponent just concedes the game. 
realizing that the Shaman Loop is not buying them anything, and um, they're going to probably deck out or lose on prizes. And they decide they're going to go first in game two. So uh, nice to be getting a win in the first round of the tournament there. And all right. <laughs> and let's go into the second round here, or the second game of the first round. Um, now they are going to be going first here, which does allow them to uh, have a better chance of getting that lock. They didn't get the lock last turn or last game until later on. Uh, which did help us in the sense of getting down things like Focus Sashes and Floodstones. And I think that's the biggest thing that Item Lock does against us, is it shuts off those those types of things. Um, well, the other nice thing is, if they put down Floodstones before they get the Item Lock, we can just, you know, use Megaphone to get rid of it. So that's really nice advantage. We'll see if our opponent, though, gets, uh, gets down their Valplume on the turn one. And again, we mulligan, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, we do play a fair amount of basics. One, let's say, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So kind of surprising. Uh, do we start Carbink or Zygarde here? Huh. Um, since they're going first, hmm. We're going to start Carbink just because Zygarde could be a liability. But if they get the item locked down, it's going to be difficult. Let's see a combi. We see a lightning go on to the combi, so that's interesting. Um, probably just, yeah, just playing down a card so that they can shame in for another card. And we see another setup. So, wow, filling up their bench quickly. They don't have an Oddish down and um, not playing down that double color list yet. I wonder if they think we have an Enhanced Hammer. I think Enhanced Hammer is another nice inclusion in this kind of deck where you have Karina. But um, even though we did have so much struggles with Enhanced Hammer last, uh, the last tournament, I think I'd prefer a card like Megaphone for sure. And Zero Sick is also a way to get rid of the special energy. So I like Zero Sick for versatility. All right, so we draw a strong energy, which is not good. Now, the good thing is, obviously, our opponent didn't get the item locked down, which is huge. Um, and we are going to be able to take a knockout on this combi, actually. Um, because we can retreat into Zygarde and um, use Lance Pulse. Um, so, they didn't really do much, honestly. They didn't even play a supporter, which is really um, encouraging. Now, we can put a Focus Sash onto Zygarde. And what the Focus Sash would do is it would essentially ensure we don't get knocked out next turn. And uh, we could either put down a Strong Energy or a Basic Energy and put down the Fighting Stadium. Um, definitely going to put the Focus Sash down on the Zygarde. Um, and so I can either play the Stadium. So the, the way I think I want to do this is play the Stadium down and put down the Basic Energy. Um, either way it works either if we just went for the strong energy or just went for the stadium the reason I like going stadium and strong energy is although we do lose a stadium card um, our opponent doesn't know we have a strong energy and um, they that way they might play into something that allows us to get a knockout next turn with cell storm so we do take the first knockout, which is great, and we get another basic energy, which is also great. It allows us to possibly power up a Carbink or even a Land's Wrath with Zygarde. We do see a double colorless coming down into Shaman and a Sky Return. So uh, yet another uh, case of the Shaman loop as they bring up another Shaman. And uh, we're happy to see this because Cellstorm is going to be coming in big handy here as we can heal that 30 damage off and restore the usage of the Focus Sash. Meanwhile, doing 80 damage would be great if we could get a knockout. Um, potentially, at some point, we could get a knockout with Land's Wrath, but it would most likely mean allowing our Sash to be broken, which I think retaining that is more important until we can draw into something else. We just don't really have much going for us. We have a VS Seeker, but no Supporter. 
And we draw an AZ. So we could play the AZ at some point, but right now is obviously not the time. Uh, we could also play the energy, but I don't think now is the time either because I'm not sure where I want to even put it yet. Um, there's a good chance it's actually going to go on to Carbink Break. So I think we're just going to Cell Storm here, buy, try and buy ourselves some turns. Now, the good thing is our opponent is basically only drawing their top deck because if they had... Um, because they can't set up for more. So they're, they're not like getting much advantage out of um out of the they're getting as much advantage out of the turns as we are though we do see they get a trainer's mail for a sycamore so question is are they going to get rid of their entire hand so they double colorless and the shaman down uh that can dump their entire hand uh, i'm not sure what could be in it that would be so bad um let's see oh wow so it looks like a bunch of energy in pokemon which um is a good thing to see. Uh, they discarded... They discarded two Vileplume. And two Gloom. Which is a really big deal. Because... And now they got down the Otter. So a turn turn late obviously. Um, and it's pretty big because... We know they play Buddy Buddy Rescue. Uh, question is what kind of Vileplume line do they run? If they run only three Vileplume. Maybe they have one prized. So we may be... Dodging the Vileplume bullet um this game again which would be fantastic see so a discard a vespaquin so it must have been a good card they got maybe that float stone right there oh they got another float stone so i'm not sure what that top deck would have been maybe it was a supporter and now they're actually going to get some use out of their sky return most likely or their um setup next turn most likely so i think what we're going to do here is as we draw a focus ash is probably just once again go for the cell storm I can't justify, I definitely can't justify a Land's Wrath now, uh, as they've got um, a more useful hand. Now, we do also see that they've discarded two Combi and two Vespaquin, which means they have no more Combi left, and, since there's two on the field, and only the two Vespaquin. So, something to keep in mind uh, as we just go for the Soul Storm, healing that 30 damage off of ourselves. I don't even really care so much about the damage at this point. Although, if our opponent does retreat with the Floatstone, uh, the damage could come in handy later if we get a Metacham out ever. But we see a <laughs> Double Colorless going on to the active, so we're probably going to be seeing a Sky Return. See the setup. They could have put the Double Colorless onto a Combi. Kind of interesting. Uh guess they're just sure that they are going to be going into the, they're going to be using uh sky return we see the buddy buddy rescue all we have in the discard pile is a fighting stadium so we don't get anything back they get the gloom back which is interesting um they obviously need the gloom but question is can they get the vile plume um we see an az picking up okay an oddish okay makes sense i suppose if they can get an ultra ball See unknown drawing them another card with farewell letter. Obviously, my opponent is in a bad situation too, though, which is good because we have a we just don't have useful cards quite yet. We draw a fighting energy, which means we can commit an energy onto the card bank. So we'll do that, uh, and we're just gonna cell storm again, heal the damage off ourselves, um, and that healing has just been so big in this series. I mean. Mm -hmm. First with Metacham, and now with Zygarde. Because they're both pretty fragile. With I mean, obviously the Focus Ash is what allows them to sustain anything. So we see a Vespaquin finally coming down. They do have a Float Stone that's going to go on to Shamaniax. And it looks like they're actually going to attack us with Vespaquin this turn. Uh, we see a setup for one card, which is not great, obviously. Uh, can they get a Vile Plume down is the question. We see an Unknown. Which they must have gotten off that shaman. We see a farewell letter. And they're at 15 cards now in deck. We've only played one, or we only have one discarded. We see the Beer Revenge doing 260 damage, but we're hanging on with that Focus Ash at 180. And uh, we draw another Focus Ash, which um, actually could be useful here. So 
we could so we have two options here we know they only have one vespa coin left so we could go for a cell storm knockout or we could go for an az play and then put the energy back on with a carb ink break now the advantage of the cell storm knockout is we heal so we're at 40 hp and and a sky return loop can't hurt us uh the advantage of the az is that we don't lose Zy our only attacker really and we can put another focus ash down before a vile plume comes down so it's kind of awkward um we just don't know if they can get another vespa coin out next turn and if they if we sell storm and then they get a vespa coin and knock us out then we're in a terrible situation um, so the question is, do we just go for the AZ while we have the chance? Or actually, let's see, yeah. So how much damage do we do? 60, 70, 80. Um, so we wouldn't even take a knockout. If we were taking a knockout, I think it'd be a different story. But as is, just, I think the AZ play is better. Um, we would have to use lands wrath to take a knockout. So we'll just put down the Zagard with a focus ash again and we can put the fighting energy on there which allows us which basically means that after this um after this attack here we will be able to lands wrath at any moment and debating whether or not to use vs seeker on az but um i mean if we do something like a battle compressor then we'd be able to get whatever supporter we want as long as he doesn't get Valplum. So it's like, I don't know, it's kind of awkward. At least now we can sell Storm for a knockout. Or Land's Wrath doesn't really make a difference. And a Lysander would be frustrating. We just see a Beer Revenge for 260, which is good, I suppose. Uh, they only get one prize. And no Vileplume yet, which is great. And let's see what we draw here. A Metacham, or a Metatite. All right. Uh, we can put down the Focus Ash on the Metatite. I think that would probably be good just in case they get down um, the Vileplume. We're going to take a Knockout with Land's Wrath for 120. And let's see what we got of our prizes. Battle Compressor, that's great. So next turn we can get out our... Um, Whatever supporter we need, probably a second more at this point, um, depending on what we top deck. And oh no, okay, <laughs> man, that's really unfortunate timing. So they get the vile plume, in the turn that we get the battle compressor. Uh, all right, well, this is interesting though. They're attacking the Vespaquin, so B Revenge does three hundred. <laughs> But only 180. And we lose Focus Ash. And we get a Karina, which is pretty big. Because here's what Karina allows us to do. Um, first of all, we just wanted a supporter badly. Obviously, we can't play the item, which is unfortunate. Um, and we could grab something like a Halucha for a free retreat. We could get the Metacham to, to allow ourselves to stay in it. Um, but I think the Regirock is the best play. Here's the reason why. Before I was talking about how uh, it's not going to be able to get enough... We're not going to be able to get enough damage with Cell Storm to take a knockout on a Vespaquin. But with one Regirock, we would be able to. Um, and at this point, I'm kind of desperate. Obviously, we could get lysander up the Regirock. But... Uh, I don't know. I don't think our opponent would be able to mill us out. So, I mean, they have way less cards than we do in deck. Um... And the item's fairly inconsequential. I guess unless we drew like a Hex Maniac. So, I don't know, it's worth draw. It's worth taking an item that's useful, but not like so useful that if we had a Sycamore, we would be willing to get rid of it. I don't know. Um, so we're going to put down Regirock, and we're going to be able to do that Cell Storm play where that puts us back at... Um, 40 HP, meaning we're out of range of a, um, we're out of range of the Sky Return. And so what's big about that is he can Sky Return loop, but we're always going to be at 
10 HP and then just keep Cell Storm. And since he's now out of Vespaquin, as we've knocked out two of them, uh, things start to get dicey for our opponent here. So we see the Sky Return. Um, if they can't get back their Vespaquin line, I don't know what they do. Uh, and we get a Karina. I think we're just going to play the Sycamore that we got off of our prizes, which is great. And we get Strong Energies, which is also great. Now, okay, we didn't... What scares me right now is that my opponent could Lysander Regirock. And so because of that, I think the right place to put the energy is actually on Regirock, even though I'd love to set up a different attacker. Um... <sighs> At least if they like Lysander a Metatite, we could retreat out of it pretty easily or just let them knock us out. But as a, with the Regirock, it's got three retreat, so with no access to an AZ anytime soon, I think the right place to put the energy is on Regirock. The other nice thing about putting on Regirock is that Regirock, once we power it up, uh, maybe it'll knock out a Shaman. So we're actually just going to go for the Lands Wrath here, taking the knockout because... If we get, um, they can't sky return lupus because for some reason our opponent did not put down a shamaniac that turn. Um, if they'd put down the shamaniac, I think I would have been forced to cell storm again, and we get an energy off the prizes, which is a really really big deal. Um, now we have three energy in hand, meaning that even if they lice into Reggie Rock, we can power it up. So we just see a sky return. So oh well, so they did have the sky return play still, obviously, um, but. Now the question is, what do we send up? I think I'm going to send up the Metatite with a Focus Sash. Um, just because it can take hits. It can take two hits. I mean, either one can take two hits from a Sky Return Shaman. And we're going to put down a Fighting Energy on Regirock. Now we will be able to attack with Regirock. And um, so next turn, as long as they don't play like an Anna or a Judge, which I don't suspect they will. And uh, once we... Once we have that Regirock, we'll be able to knock out anything. Um, it'll be doing 140 to Nani X's, and uh, well, it'll be, be doing 140 to a Shaman, too, actually. So, cool thing there is uh, we'll be able to knock out anything on their field. And see a Lysander that's going to come on Regirock. And little does our opponent know, we have a way around this. They're probably thinking, okay. We will try to rototill her, or we'll try to burrow them down. But it's obviously a desperation play, hoping that we don't have any energy, or we don't draw into any energy. And so I say GG to my opponent, because we do indeed have the energy in hand. And uh, we're going to be able to use that bedrock press for the win, doing 280 to that poor little bunny bee. And um, good game to my opponent. Oh, wow, our, I think that was our last energy that was prized there. So that strong energy, so really big deal. Getting that other energy off the prizes. And, uh, yeah, we pulled off a win there. Uh, we, you can see Zygarde EX was actually the MVP there. And uh, the surprise here is we did less damage than them, but that healed damage, uh, 150, was so big. Um, and, obviously, focus sashes were huge in this matchup. So, um Let's see there, that 150 heal damage was so big. Um, so, thanks for watching. Um, we'll see you at the next round uh, of this August Poke Beach tournament. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.